Hello and welcome to this first in a series of GCSE economics videos presented by MrGoff.com. Today's video focuses on the main economic groups and the theory of interdependence. There are three main economic groups, consumers, producers and the government. Consumers are the people that buy goods and services. They consume these goods and services directly. That is, they use them themselves. You might think that the hairdressers in the final picture might be considered consumers themselves, as they will have to buy things like shampoo in order to run their business. You are not considered a consumer if the goods and services you purchase are for the purpose of running your business. Consumers decide whether they think products are worth buying or not. Some products turn out to be very successful. Others, not so much. Producers are the people that make or produce goods and services. This can include farmers, manufacturers and even retailers. A lot of producers are big firms that you've probably heard of. Even though these logos have had the words removed, I bet you still recognise who a lot of them are. Producers can also be small firms or individuals as well. In the UK, the government is elected by the people. This gives them the power to make and enforce rules about how the country is run. Rules like speed limits or health and safety regulations. Interdependence is the term we use to refer to the fact that each of these three main sectors of the economy each rely on each other. Each time one of them does something, it impacts on what happens to the others. Let's start by looking at the relationship between consumers and producers. Consumers buy the goods and services that producers create. The producers offer work to those consumers for which they pay them wages. Without the wages they earn, the consumers would not be able to afford to buy the products the firms make. Next, let's look at the relationship between government and producers. The government may be a customer of producers, buying the goods and services that they produce. The government also sets rules like product standards and safe working conditions. The government sets the rate of tax business must pay, and the government might subsidise in industries that it wants to encourage, such as renewable energies. Finally, we can have a look at the relationship between government and consumers. Government taxes consumers, and from their taxes, they provide them with things like health and education facilities. They also provide laws for society and how society should behave, and they enforce those laws. The government also provides welfare to those people who need it most. Finally, let's look at a practical example of interdependence, the sugar tax. The sugar tax was imposed by the UK government, but it came about because the government thought that consumers children in particular were drinking too many sugary drinks and there was likely to be an obesity problem. This in turn led sugary drinks becoming more expensive, which in turn led many drink manufacturers to reduce their sugar content in their recipes so they could pay less tax. This has led to consumers buying less sugary drinks. This hopefully will reduce the future burden on health resources that the government supplies you can see that all of the different groups within the economy are highly interrelated in this example. Now it's over to you to try something for yourself. 
See if you can come up with another example of interdependence working within the economy. That's all for now. Until next time, stay safe. That's it for today. I hope you've learned a lot about the main economic groups and the theory of interdependence. I've been Mr Goff from mrgoff.com. I'll see you all in another economics tutorial. Bye for now.